Hello and welcome to the broadcast today. This is Roger Hutchins, Cheryl, uh, Roger and Cheryl Hutchins, and we just uh, are thankful that we can come to you today on this broadcast, and we are agreeing together that God will uh, move in your life. We just are feeling and thankful, those of you that have uh, messenger, messaged us and are watching on a daily basis, or not daily basis, but as you can, I know we have busy lives, that's why we uh, do these on videos instead of live because not everybody can uh, uh, get on live but we do it uh, on a daily basis so we can uh, record them put them on uh, YouTube and Facebook and Twitter so you can go back and, and pick up and watch them every day because we believe they're life to you we believe God uh, you know that's what we pray God let us be a voice of life let us be a voice that will uh, send forth the word of God and Jesus said uh, that the words that I say unto you they're spirit and their life and we have prayed we've agreed Cheryl and I want to be a voice of life to you that the life of God be, will begin to resonate in you and begin to lift up uh, you uh, in the heart well this is this is going to be our last uh, program specifically on the, the kingdom of God but let me just tell you as you hear the word of God preached uh, the kingdom of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, is always embedded in the things that that are preached, the things that Paul preached, the things that Jesus preached, the things that Peter preached. They're they're there. So uh, although we're going to end as calling it the topic of the kingdom uh, here on this lesson, I think what this said is 17 lessons we've been doing on the kingdom of God as well as trying to minister to you and pray for you every day. We, we believe good things are going to happen. We still believe uh, in our heart and spirit that good things are going to happen to you. Huh? Not just for us. You know, so many times uh, we look around and it's only the preachers that are getting blessed. But but we're believing that God, God connects people with the word and spirit that you be blessed, that God began to do great and mighty things in your life. Uh, not not just superficial things, but mighty things in your life. Uh, I believe God's healing uh, power is coming forth as we preach and teach the Word of God. Uh, we're going to pray. Uh, I want to pray with you in just a moment. Uh, but as we set this lesson up today, uh, I want you to review all the the lessons. I want you to go back and and watch if you have, if you missed any of them. You need to go back and watch. Uh, every one and, and just see what God uh, is saying about the kingdom of God because it's in the kingdom of God that we experience righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So many Christians today uh, uh, occupy a pew, but they're not experiencing righteousness, they're not experiencing peace, and they're not experiencing joy uh, in the Holy Ghost. Why? Because they're trying to do it outside the kingdom of God uh, and the lesson today uh, will we'll maybe explain a little bit of why people are in the church, but they're not operating in the atmosphere of the kingdom. So as we pray, we're going to pray and believe God. If you don't know the Lord as we pray, I want you to ask him into your life, will you? I want you to know uh, this Jesus that lives in me, that lives in Cheryl, that lives uh, in the earth today, in his body and in his people. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for your word. We thank you, God, for the lessons that you have allowed us to teach on the benefits of the kingdom of God and just to understand more about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, God, that you would uh, just touch the people today, God. We thank you, Lord, that you promised us as we prayed uh, during these last uh, broadcasts, God, that you would do good things in the life of the people. And God, good things are going to happen for many that listen today. And God, we ask you right now that you set that in motion. Father, we first of all ask you that there any be anybody listening today that don't know you, that's never asked you to be in their heart, that they're not born again. God, that you would move on them. God, that you would accept them. And I want you to pray with uh, that prayer right now and ask the Lord into your heart. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you as we pray. God, I thank you, Lord, that your healing touch is going out uh, right now by your word. Your scripture says uh, you sent your word and healed them. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that the word that we speak 
God goes forth as words of life and they touch and heal and bring great things to your people, Father. We give you thanks and praise, God. Those that are struggling, I sense uh, some struggling financially, struggling uh, with life, just life itself, struggling with, uh, with, with, with mental torment. God, I thank you, Lord. Lord, you, I, I'm here right now today, God rebuke that torment off the minds of, of, of some of the people that have been trying to, to listen and comprehend and take hold of what uh, you're saying. But God, right now, we bind that spirit and we thank you, Lord, that you, uh, God, loose their minds, loose their thoughts. God, that they can think correct thoughts and understand the kingdom of God. We thank you, Lord, that they enter into a new place in you, a new arena. And God, we give you glory. Thank you for the good things that's going to happen in them. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Well, today we want to talk, uh, as we end out the lesson, a very important uh, lesson on the kingdom of God. Uh, many times, as I look at the, the what we've called the church, uh, we see people that are very uh, arrogant, very, uh, you know, uh, that, that don't really reflect the nature and the, the, the walk of Jesus. Uh, I, own, I think it was yesterday I, I saw a post of a young lady that uh, was very, uh, you know, seemed to be broken, but, but talking about church people being so mean, and I, I entreated her, we don't need to seek a, a relationship just with church people. Yes, we need fellowship, we need friendship, but can I tell you, we can't let fellowship and friendship with people change our walk with God. So many are doing that today. So many are doing that. And so many preachers are compromising and saying, okay, uh, you've, uh, uh, you know, just, uh, it, great, God's just forgiven everything and you don't have to change. God changes you. Whenever the kingdom of God comes into your life, it changes you. It empowers you to be an overcomer in this earth. So uh, uh, as we read, I want to talk about a very, uh, a very special lesson that Jesus taught uh, in the 18th chapter in the first verse of Matthew. It says, at the, at the same time came the disciples unto Jesus saying, who is greatest in the kingdom of God? Now, you know, I have learned that somebody, somebody has to go around uh, spouting uh, who they are and how great they are. Uh, what a great title or position they have in the kingdom. Uh, they're really not walking in kingdom principles. Watch, watch what the, the lesson's going to say. Uh, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus ca called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as a little child, a little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, uh, you know, I'm, we we kept our uh, our uh, one of our granddaughters yesterday, and uh, you know she, she when she gets here she's just right at home. She, this is the, the, everything is hers. She just uh, takes charge of everything she can take charge of, and and uh, she leads me and Granny around by the uh, by the hand, and uh, you know that that's the way of little children. Uh, whenever they the, they feel comfortable, they feel at home, they just humble themselves and they're not afraid to ask for anything. Uh, verse four says, whosoever therefore shall humble himself. So say that word, humble. humble. Humble yourself. See, the kingdom of God is not filled with those that are arrogant. We know who we are. We're kings, uh, king, uh, he's king of kings and we're the kings he's king of. Uh, you know, and he has made us uh, a royal priesthood. We are a royal priesthood in Him. So we, we, we're not putting that part down, but how you enter into it, how you operate is through an humble uh, spirit. Somebody, uh, one definition I've heard sometime uh, was humble means teachable. You know, sometime I, I hope uh, as you have heard these lessons, you've been open and teachable. And, uh, you know, don't harden your heart against what God is trying to do and say unto you. Uh, but he said, Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as a little ch uh, child, and the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Uh, you know, a, a lot of times I find people that seeking 
to be great. But seeking to be great uh, in your own effort, in your own uh, status, is not going to make you greatest in the kingdom of heaven. What's well, going to make you great in the kingdom of heaven, in fact, I'm reminded uh, whenever Jesus was talking about John Baptist, John said of, of uh, those born of women, there's not a greater uh, in the earth, but the least in the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist. So uh, whenever we look at the kingdom of God, we're not looking at somebody uh, uh, that is uh, set in a hierarchy. There's only one king in the kingdom. Now, I realize I just said we're kings of that king, but there's only one, one God, one Father, uh, one God. There's an in all, in all, among all. I'm getting tongue tangled here. But whenever we realize if we're not worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ, if we're not humbling ourselves, uh, you know, I, it saddens me that there is a, a spirit on the generation that we call millennials and we call, I don't know, there's another uh, one that's come after that or whatever. Uh, in fact, recently we sat in a, uh, uh, in a uh, uh, meeting where there was a, a board of uh, millennia and that the focus was on, uh, on those that have walked with God for years and the older folk uh, changing, you know, that we needed to change. Uh, but when I read the scripture, I see that that uh, that there there has to be a place where we all humble ourselves as children of God. Now, listen. I want to read uh, in James four and verse six. Uh, it says, "God resisteth the proud, but giveth more grace to uh, to the humble." Uh, you know, if, if we come into the kingdom, if we try to come into the kingdom with a proud and haughty spirit then uh, God resists us. But He gives grace to the humble. In other words, if we come to God uh, realizing our sins are forgiven, it's not because of who we are, it's because of who He is. It's because He's laid down His life and He's paid the price for us. Amen. Now, there's another scripture in First Peter I've asked Cheryl to read, and I want to read that in, in any comments you have or whatever. If you want to preach a while, go for it. It's 1 Peter 5.5, 5, and it says, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yes, all be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. Hallelujah. For God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Um, I do want to point out a couple of things. Roger has mentioned in a couple of lessons, and just a few minutes ago, um, about the king of kings that we are kings Amen. but we're not the king that rules over the heavens and the earth this is our kingdom right here <laughs> we are to rule over our spirit and our body and our soul this is our job and then out from that flows living waters when we come into alignment with the king of kings but I want to mention a couple things about these scriptures. In verse 3 it says, except ye be converted. Well, to be converted Amen. means to turn around. So Jesus was saying, basically, just to paraphrase, don't come asking me who's the greatest. That's the wrong mindset. You need to turn around. Amen. And he put a little child in their, met, in their midst. And one thing that we know about children we have 15 grandchildren and so we know a little bit about children Amen. <laughs> they are very quick to forgive they can fuss and fight with each other and even bop one another on the head but the next five minutes they're playing together like they're best buddies yeah. um, they're very quick to ask believe you me they have no problem asking granny i'm hungry or granny can we take a walk or granny can we do this or that or where's grandpa grandpa will you go with us they're quick to ask for whatever at that moment they desire and they're also very quick to receive and if the church needs to learn anything as adults Amen. we need to learn how to receive from God he 
toiling and sweating and groaning and moaning trying to grow or trying to prosper this is not part of the kingdom of God Amen. we need to be like that little child and be so willing to ask our father for whatever we need yes. and then receive it and let God answer it instead of trying to make it Amen. happen ourselves. so those were some of the thoughts I had Amen. I mean, I think that's so important, uh, you know, for us to understand that it takes an humble spirit. Uh, a lot of people struggle with their day-to-day -day walk with God. Uh, and, uh, you know, because uh, this is not a... I, I, I'm thinking about uh, an old song that I heard years ago, and uh, I, I did it my way. You know, if, when we say and understand that my way is not the way of the kingdom of God, my way, uh, actually, I, I like to say it like this, that, that the kingdom of God is a backward kingdom. Uh, you know, the way up is down. Uh, what I mean by that? I mean, you humble yourself. Uh, you know, we used to use that and say, well, get on your knees and pray. Well, prayer is not a position you get. It's, it's a condition of your heart. Uh, but uh, whenever we understand that, that God brings us to that place, that now He wants us to enter into a relationship with Him, and He wants us not only to enter into a relationship with Him, but He wants us to live. And here's where a lot of people, I think a lot of the, the younger generation are having a problem right now. He wants us to live according to the, the, the concepts of the kingdom of God uh, that that we live righteousness, peace, and joy. Now, what does that mean? If we're not living righteous before God, what is, that means uh, that He, we understand that He took my sins, He washed me white as snow by His blood, and now He has empowered me to live uh, righteously, and I am no longer uh, bound by uh, my circumstances, that have bound me before the the sins that are um, the sins that have kept me in bondage to the past are now gone, and now I am empowered to live a kingdom lifestyle uh, that will cause me to walk and manifest uh, that righteousness, that peace, and that joy uh, that's in the Holy Ghost. Uh, it's, if we're not walking, if there's things out of out of place in our life, uh, it shows up in our peace sometimes, many times. You know, there's a place whenever I come to people that that are in trouble. When I'm counseling with somebody, when I'm praying with somebody, and and uh, they're they're telling me things are out of order, and uh, I begin to uh, minister to, the, to them on the basis of their peace, because a lot of times, if pe if people aren't walking in peace. I, I'm reminded of uh, other disciples uh, on the sea when Jesus was asleep in the back of the boat. There was a storm there. And uh, the storm was uh, threatening to the disciples. And, and finally they woke Jesus up because he was in the back of the boat asleep in the middle of the storm. And uh, and uh, they said, Jesus, don't you care if we, we perish? And uh what Jesus said then, uh, when he said, peace be still. Now, was he talking to the storm? Because the waves stopped and settled down. Or was he talking about uh, the lack of peace inside those uh, disciples? You know, sometimes I think if we can, if we can let ourselves be at rest and peace, although the storms are going on all around us, then... Uh, then we, we can think clearly. Uh, have you ever tried to think clearly in the midst of a, a panicky situation? These, these disciples on that Sea of Galilee couldn't, uh, couldn't think clearly because they were thinking about all the waves and they were thinking about, oh, well, we're going to perish, we're going to die. <laughs> Uh, you know, I've, I've been there, to be honest with you. I've been in a place sometime when I was about to, 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 to panic uh, and all, and just... But what I found is whenever I allow the peace of God to begin to come into my life, this is for somebody. Somebody's struggling right now and you lack peace 
in, the, in certain situations. And I want to speak to you by the power of the Word of God, the kingdom of God. You've humbled yourself. Uh, you know, when you humble yourself, and, and I know this because I'm, I'm the type of person that, uh, you know, I think, well, if I can do it on my own, let's just let me take hold and do it. Uh, but then God begins to require, uh, you've got to, uh, this, is, this is greater than what you can do. You've got to partner with me and let me do it. Uh, and so I have to uh, humble myself like a little child. And I have to say, okay, God, I agree with what you want. And, I'll, and I humble myself. And then the peace of God comes. There's a trust. Now, what I'm seeing might not change immediately, but what happens on the inside of me is there's a peace now. And I accept that peace of God. I flow and walk in that peace of God. I've walked, in, I've walked righteously. I, I, I'm, I'm uh, repentant of, of anything that's out of order. And then peace begins to dwell in my heart. And then guess what? As God begins to move, there's joy, joy unspeakable and full of glory. I want you to go there. I want you to live there. I want you to uh, accept that place. There are some things that you're not going to be able to handle. And guess what? The, the remedy is is not to panic and try to find somebody else. To, the, the, the remedy is that you humble yourself, become like a little child, and let the peace of God dwell in your heart richly. And as that peace of God dwells in your heart, you learn to trust God and allow God to bring you into a position. Cheryl mentioned receiving a while ago. Uh, bring you into a position that you can receive what God's got for you. Because I promise you, God's got something better for you uh, than you got than you can imagine for yourself. Well, I, there's a couple things I want to mention. One thing that occurred to me while Roger was speaking is that a child never if they fall down or they get a little nick they run right up to you and show you their boo-boo and they want you to kiss it and make it better or put a band-aid on it and make it feel better and it's the same way when we have these situations in our life that have caused us unrest and no peace we need to take that boo-boo to the father <laughs> you know sometimes yeah. the storm Amen. comes from other people Sometimes it comes because we've messed up or we are just we have a need and we just see no way for it to be met. Whatever is disrupting our peace. Um, we read earlier first Peter five five, but it's so important the next two verses after that. It says, uh, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God Amen. that he may exalt you in due time. But the way, one way, one major way we humble ourselves is what verse 7 says. Casting all your care upon him. Not some of it. All of it. For he cares for you. Now we can do that or not do that. Yeah. We can believe God genuinely cares for us enough to take care of the situation or not. But that's what God said. Yes, sir. For us, we choose to believe it. We cast our care on Him. We know He cares for us. And we give Him time to take care of the situation. Amen. You know, I just felt the direction of the Lord whenever you read that, casting our care upon Him. Uh, you know, sometimes our load is heavy. And I, I'm reminded sometimes whenever we work outside or we do our gardening or something I, I, I get these big bags of uh, fertilizer or soil or something that's, and it, it takes some effort to lift that and uh, you know sometimes whenever something's too heavy for us we just need some help and I, God just said to me whenever Cheryl was reading that as we close in just a few minutes uh, we're going to pray for you and I want you to begin to prepare your heart uh, I want you to begin to think. There's there's some things you've been going through that's too heavy for you, that you you feel like you can't bear. Well, first of all, I want you to I want you to realize that the place to cast it is on Jesus. You can get 500 people that can't help you with a load, but Jesus, if you'll cast it on the Lord, the cares 
uh, of this life. If you'll humble yourself to do that. So many things that God tells us to do, it takes an humble, an humbling of our heart. Like I said I, I earlier, or, or either last uh, broadcast or this one, one, that I'm the type of person that uh, likes to do it myself. So it takes some humbling sometime for me to say, hey, I just need some help. Uh, so, uh, and I remember my grandfather, he used to, I, I think sometimes I can pick up a heavy load, but my grandfather uh, could put two 50 pound bags on one on each shoulder and walk for a mile and not even be out of breath. But, uh, but you know, he'd pick it up and when he rolled it off, he'd roll it, uh, he'd just let it roll off on the, uh, wherever he was delivering it to. And you know what, the, you, you may have that heavy load on your shoulder. Uh, we're talking about the kingdom of God now. Uh, I want you to move into the realm of the kingdom and cast your cares on him. As we pray today, uh, we believe God. Cheryl, let's, Cheryl and I are joining hands and we're gonna agree together. And we want you to agree with us. Name whatever it is, whatever's on your, on your uh, your load is whatever your heavy load is we want you to cast it on him all your cares whatever you is causing you care or concern today uh, I want you to roll it off on him because guess what good things are going to happen to you and you don't want to be carrying that care around and, and miss them you want that right. care cast off uh, you know you, and you look around and uh, sometime if you're carrying a care and carrying a load uh, it's done pass you by it's not going to pass you by Cast your care on him today and get ready because God is going to bring good things to you. The blessings of God are upon you and you're going to receive. Father, in the name of Jesus, as Cheryl and I agree with uh, those that are listening today, and I want you to put your name in, Cheryl Roger, and, and say your name. Uh, agree with Jesus Christ. Agree with the kingdom of God. And we come together and we thank you, Father, for the strength, the ability, and the wisdom to roll our cares off on you. You care for us, and God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that we roll off the cares of this life, that we humble ourselves and we become as little children. God, we thank you, Lord, that we're seeking, God, we're seeking you. We're humbling ourselves to seek you. Uh, not seeking to be great, but because we're humbling ourselves, God, you said we would be the greatest in the kingdom of God. And I thank you, Lord, for great people that are listening to this broadcast. I thank you, Father, that you anoint them, that you cause them to have the ability to cast all their cares off on you. And I'm gonna, I, I feel like this. I'm going to count to three. And when I say three, I want you to cast it off. I want you to roll it off and say, God, it's no longer mine. I cast it off in Jesus' name. One, two, three. Now we cast that off right now in Jesus' name and we stand in faith believing that every care that's being carried right now is cast off unto you. And we thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. As we close today, we thank you for listening. Uh, let us know. Let us testify to us and tell us what good things are happening to you. We love you and God bless you. Uh, we will see you next time.